What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today on the channel we're doing a 100,000 mile update on the W205. Uh, this model is 2017 and we're going to do a down and dirty. Uh, just what I think about the car, any problems I've had in the last 100,000 miles. Stay tuned. <laughs> Alright guys, so let's get down to uh, some things that I have to say about the car over the last 100,000 miles. Absolutely love the car. It's been a dream. I love the formatic. It literally is good in every situation. Uh, some of the time I have problems in the rain though. Uh, I notice this a lot that it hydroplanes very easily. Now, driving country roads with a lot of water on them where they rut out, um, this can be a little risky. So from time to time it's dicey in the rain, but nonetheless it's pretty darn good. Uh, if I'm in the snow, it doesn't matter how heavy the snow is, um, I've driven through some heavy snows to the point where the front bumper is plowing snow. So it definitely handles snow like a dream, it's, it's basically like driving a truck except for it's not you know, 12 inches off the ground, it's four inches off the ground. So, um, you know, it's, it's not bad for a car. That formatic definitely makes a difference. If you're looking at purchasing one of these vehicles and you're worried about, you know, how well does it hold up, it holds up pretty darn good. This car has been to the dealership three times. Uh, once for EVAP fuel canister, uh, the, basically the, the, uh, the EVAP system and the fuel system, blah, 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 the, uh, charcoal canister had to get replaced. The second time around was for a PCV valve, and the third time around was for a PCV valve. Now, was that a problem with the part? I'm not sure. Is it inherently a bad design? Maybe, but it was all covered under my warranty, and if it wasn't, it would have been a little pricey. So, I don't know the exact price of what it would have costed or cost to have that PCV valve done, uh, you know, out of my own pocket really don't care, uh, every, everywhere is gonna be a little different. Each dealer is gonna charge uh, a different amount of things. The car's been pretty darn good. I've been through three sets of tires. Uh, it's still having that issue with the rear of the car. If you've watched my video before, the five things I hate about uh, the Mercedes W205, uh, the camber in the rear is wearing out tires, what I consider prematurely. I'm getting about 20,000 miles out of them before I need to replace them. You know, that's a little bit excessive for me, especially when you're talking about commuter miles. Um, you know, I, I think it wears out tires a little fast, but every performance vehicle is going to go through tires in some way, shape or form. Uh, we're not driving an Acura here, so I get it. So the next thing on the agenda is let's talk about the fuel mileage. So if you're looking into one of these vehicles, I've only seen the fuel mileage go up in this vehicle. Uh, I have a trip set for like the last 17,000 some miles and I'm getting around 27 miles to the gallon. I'll roll in a picture here. Um, this is in comfort mode. This is the default mode comfort and it does pretty darn good. That's, you know, a mix of highway driving and city driving does pretty good. Now, if you're going on a, a trip, I tested it the other day for video's sake. Uh, I drove for an hour uh, on a commute and I got about 31 miles to the gallon in comfort. On the way back, I drove an Eco and I got about 34 miles to the gallon. So it does pretty darn good on gas. I've treated this with uh, a, a premium unleaded. I don't know why I was lost for words there, but premium unleaded 93 octane is what I usually put in this. I don't go below 93. Um, and it's been doing pretty good. So I really don't have anything bad to say about the car. Yeah, the rear camber thing is an issue. It should go back to the dealer. Um, I do notice that uh, right before you're kind of due for a transmission fluid change, it, the transmission will get a little herky-jerky, but it's nothing that uh, is excessive or something that you have to worry about. I've done two transmission oil changes or fluid flushes, and it's been... Uh, it's remedied the situation each time. So not really a deal breaker. Keep up with your maintenance, keep up with that preventative maintenance, keep on the schedule of everything it needs done on the car uh, and it will treat you, treat you very well. So I hope you guys, you know, got the gist of it. 
I'm stumbling around on my words tonight, it feels like, but whatever. Uh, we're here to give you some content. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're looking to buy one of these uh, secondhand, they come really cheap. I got this one certified pre-owned, and I've had it for, what, almost three years now? So, uh, two and a half years? Don't know exactly. Um, but it's been really good to me, and it will continue to be good to me. I'm sure of it. And, uh, you know, if you're looking into it, by all means, don't be afraid to get behind the wheel of one of these things because they're not that bad. Uh, it, and, you know, if you're comparing this against a BMW, I don't even know why you're researching it. You know, this is clearly the better option. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, enough of me rambling around and stumbling on my words. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're into. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the, to the channel already, please consider clicking that subscribe button as we're doing all kinds of man stuff around here. And if you've clicked subscribe already and you're somebody who's been around the channel, I appreciate your loyalty and we'll see you guys in the next video.